federal government has threatened to replace striking resident doctors with ad hoc staff. Recall that the National Association of Resident Doctors embarked on a five-day warning strike on Wednesday over unmet demand. The resident doctors, among other things, are demanding an increment in the consolidated medical salary structure to the tune of 200 per percent of the current gross salary of doctors. According to Ngige, the striking resident doctors were crying wolf. He also said that NAD was disrespectful to the Nigerian Medical Association, uh, which had already uh, started negotiating with the government on its behalf. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dr. Samuel Okirinde. He is the immediate past president, Association of Resident Doctors, Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Thank you so much, Dr. Okirinde, for joining us. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, this has been a back and forth that you've had with the federal government on, on met demands. And now the, uh, the federal government is saying, in fact, the Minister of Labor uh, is saying that you are crying wolf and that you're being disrespectful to the enemy. What do you think he means by that? Okay, uh, I guess the uh, Minister uh, of engage should be in a better position to explain what it means like that. So I think it's something for us to worry about when uh, our association has um, is trying to push for the agreement that the government itself has got into. And just only asking for the government to fulfill the agreement that he himself or herself um, went to with um, President of the so I think a lot of people, when um, people are demanding for you to be accountable and they've been nice to say, you know, threatening, hey, like, you're going to replace those um, staff, you know, with um, ad hoc staff. I, don't, I think that's quite um, unfortunate. I, I'm, being Coming made, from the staff. I'm being made to understand that for a whole year, resident doctors in states like Abia, Imo, um, Ondo, and Akiti are still being owed salaries. Um, let alone meeting the demands or having conversations. I hear that conversations have been had um, on your behalf by the NMA. Um, how well is that going? Okay, so that's another issue. Uh, let me association as uh, these are all peculiar issues. Yeah. Issues that affect all doctors. I think uh, the one that benefits is Actually, it has to do with the context, um, uh, common salary structure, okay, the office, which of course is local about you. The other issue that ARC, sorry, that is talking about is those ones that directly concern our member. We just talked about some of our members who have not paid for more than 24 months. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have resident doctors in Nigeria. Despite we're talking about brain drain, talking about people living in the country, we still have some states maltreating their doctors, not paying them. Now, there is an issue of medical expenses, which is an hack, actually, known as medical expenses, um, which is supposed to pay uh, the resident doctor annually a token. This is legal. The things are supposed to be cut up for their exams. Transport, accommodation, and all of those, all of those. But, but even 2023, the government is yet to pay for that. Another thing that the uh, applicant is pushing for is that they want a um, replacement, one-on-one -on -one replacement of doctors that have left the system. As doctors are leaving, yes, you can't stop them from leaving for different reasons. But let's have this system. Let's remove the bureaucratic uh, red tape visit where you have to wait for several months to years before the workforce is being replaced. This has, of course, led to lots of uh, burnout syndrome among those that are left behind. So what NAD, NLD, is asking for is that please, can you work on this system so that you have an easy way of replacing any doctor that leaves the system? I don't think that is too much to ask. So those are that is why um, you know also asking for infrastructural development of the health sector. I, I believe asking for the better funding of the health sector so that we are better able to provide good services to the training population of the country. Hmm. I don't think this is too hard. It's too much to ask.
from any responsible you, you made mention of something that everybody has been talking about lately. Um, the brain drain in the medical sector, which has led to a lot of doctors fleeing the country. And, of course, you know about the uh, motion that was pushed on the floor of the National Assembly about increasing the number of years um, that doctors study and um, how long they would have to stay before they decide that they can leave the country. But you've also talked about the fact that those who have left have not been replaced. And I'm curious to understand the process because I'm not a doctor. I don't work in a hospital. Um, I do not understand the bureaucracies of replacing um, one doctor after another has left. Uh, do you think it's the process that's um, the problem or is it that government is refusing to re-recruit new doctors? Because I'm, I understand that more and more people are being churned out of medical school uh, and are looking for where to be placed. All right. It's it, 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 shocking to know that despite the health sector being, uh, let me use the word, underemployed, okay? Talking about the death of doctors in Nigeria is quite a bit mm -hmm. You definitely have some doctors who um, are not employed, who probably are just to really for them to do uh, one form of specialization, one residency, or the other. But you find out that the staff were not able to accommodate them, despite people leaving. And this is not far fetched. It's simply about the system in place. The difficulty, for example, in recruitment, the difficulty in replacement. I'm talking about um, uh, what you talked about, um, having to put people down for five years. The question is why are people living? Why are people going to other places? If one of them top on it, has to um, poor remuneration, poor welfare, you understand? And if you are not as if the government is not addressing this, but people, the young doctors, will definitely leave the place where they will be better treated, where they will have better welfare, where they have equipment and infrastructure to work with, rather than having to want to fund them or tie them down or threaten them or even replace them, make the environment suitable. Attend to all of that issue. And I bet you that even those that have left, they will come back if the systems or the challenges have been uh, attended to. Let, let's look at this threat that the federal government is making, um, that they would replace resident doctors with ad hoc staff. I'm guessing that this ad hoc staff would be maybe medical personnel. I, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. And if the government is capable of replacing resident doctors, um, should they not be looking into recruiting more of these resident doctors? On the flip side, um, how, how willing are you to lose your jobs? Because it sounds like the federal government is serious about re your replacement. I can I can I can bet I can bet for a fact. You know, if if it's easy for them to get or recruit ad hoc staff, so how come how how is it hard or tough for you to replace those that have left the system or to even employ? We are like I said, we are quite the doctor patient ratio in Nigeria is one of it's one of the worst all over the world. We are talking about the doctor thing. It's more than 10,000, and in the Patrick, it's not a doctor, it's about 45,000 people. So, rather than saying that you want to um, replace those who are trying to demand for better equity, the one you want, the hard doc you want to go and employ, why not bring them into the system so that at the end of the, at the, end of the day, the system is spread out? These things are doable. But then the question is, is that the political will of the part of the government to do it? If there is a, if, if there is a government that prioritizes it, for example, we have been also been clamoring. What we are clamoring for is that we have a minimum of 50% budgetary allocation to health. This was an agreement that was signed in 2001 by the Abuja Declaration. It happened there in Nigeria. Hmm. Nigerian government has never budgeted up to 8%. Not talk about 15%. And if the health system is not properly funded, 
then of course, you know what would happen. We really cannot get better outcomes that, that we desire. Let me ask you finally, May 29 is around the corner. It, I don't know if from the conversations that you've had with the federal government and representatives of the Ministry of Labour, um, I don't know if there's any body language that shows that there's going to be a ground shifting under the Buhari administration. But May 29 is around the corner. Do you see the government um, elect that is about to come in um, f looking in the direction of bettering the lot of the you know, health sector? Because like, as you said, um, the health sector is nothing to write home about. So um, how positive and optimistic are you about the incoming administration and how, they will pay, how much attention they would pay to the health sector? Okay, um, of course, I want to say that the uh, NLD wouldn't have gone on strike, which one is strike, which is just part of it, if the government has been responsible enough to call them to the negotiating table to look at the things that have been raised. You know, so it is a passionate appeal to the income government, the sector of the and its administration to, as a matter of urgency, improve funding to the SK sector to actually take the steps based on the Abuja Declaration recommendation. Number two, whosoever that is going to appoint to head the health ministry has to be people that are willing to do the work, particularly in the area of motivating the health workforce, not just doctors now, nurses and other health care professionals. They need to look into their admiration. They need to look into the welfare packages. They need to look at loans for doctors. And they need to look for better ways to retain the workforce and not the issue of them having to want to enslave and to stay in the field that one of them has, has proposed. So the government has a lot of work to do uh, to improve um, the healthcare sector. All right. Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, Dr. Samuel Kirinde is uh, the immediate past president of the Association of Resident Doctors, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. Uh, well, we're keeping our fingers crossed and hope that um, some positive news will come for, for, the NR, for the NARD. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. But, but because it's Friday, we leave you with the highlights of the show this week. My name is Mary Anokun. Do have a pleasant weekend. We'll be back on Monday to talk for development. Have a good evening. The trend, which has always led our censors to be so controversial, the last acceptable census in Nigeria um, which was not in any um, controversy, was the 1963 census. Since then, it has always been one manipulation after the other, one suspicion after the other. Uh, for instance, um, uh, let me give you a good example. Nigeria is the only country in the whole world where there are more people in the bushes, you know, in, the, in, 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 in um, desertified areas than in the coastal areas. It runs against the, you know, the currency of thinking, currency of movement, migration, anywhere in the whole world. Mm. So, and how does this happen? It's not the physical thing. You only need to go and stay in Baga or stay in some water. You see how many trucks of people are moving into the girls on a daily basis, you know, carrying passengers and dropping people off and all that. And many of them are not going back. Whereas, when you see that, or when you see the sensors, the figures you will have will be totally different. You know, so it's quite... Um, a very difficult situation, but we can surmount this problem by using technology and ensuring that, you know, everybody has NIN. Once you have NIN, you'll be captured on the system. Then we need to integrate the whole system in a way that it will be easier for any government, including authorities like Nigerian Police Force, CFCC and others, to easily access information uh, without violating uh, people's privacy. But access information, particularly when crimes are committed. Buhari and the man Tinubu are, not, are two different types of people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. the, there is something that, that Mr. Tinubu knows about people. He, he understands betrayal. And he knows exactly what Wike has done. And I want to tell you that even if Wike is a minister, within one year, there's going to be a problem that is going to create a scandal just for him to, to be exited from the place. I don't know what sort of 
what sort of agreement he's going to have and said, I must be a minister for four years. I don't know how that's going to work out. But at the end of the day, there's something that Mr. Otu said, which I, I found very instructive. Why must we in the Niger Delta always be the cash cow for these people? Do they really respect us for who we are or the takes to exploit us for the resources that we have? Was Wike approached on account of his superior capacity and intellectual, you know, um, prowess? Or was he approached because he had the money and could turn and do the daily job? Even mm -hmm. my government, why was he made the chairman of the campaign uh, committee of, uh, of, of the PDP? I think we in the Niger Delta need to really come back and sit down and ask ourselves very critical questions on how our resources must be deployed at national level. The problem was this. Tell on insecurity. An American was kidnapped somewhere in Africa and was brought down to Nigeria. And the American president said he wants that American released alive within 24 hours. And from all the way from America, they came to Nigeria and they rescued that person. Is that what, is that what we call purposeful leadership? And some people are traumatizing you in your country. And you are calling a gorilla warfare? A gorilla warfare? And you cannot tackle it? Anyway, let's leave that because of our time. Let's leave it authority. Let's come to economy. Let's come to economy. What, what were the economic indices that made Nigeria the fastest growing economy in Africa pre-2015? Because the data are there. Not manufactured by me, but even by our statistical our bureau in Nigeria. All right? What were the indices then? What do we have now? I mean, I, I wouldn't want to use, I wouldn't want to use words that, that will not be easily discerned by listeners. But rather, I will go to the basics. In 2014 to 2015, what was our exchange rate? That's number one. What were the productive capacity of our industry? That's number two. When we're looking at when we're looking at rate of employment, what are we having then now? I mean, what are we having until now? How much was a bag of rice then? How much is it now? I'm talking about I'm talking about uh, uh, market price indices. What do we have then? What do we have now? Are you talking about economy? Listen. What, what, what was the rate of, of people, professionals, learned people, living our country then, till now, I mean, till now? It is just now that we're not having, uh, I mean, very loud, deafening syndrome. Now, Mr. the continuum. Was this say because government is a continuum? We will not continue on things that that no. That is not a defined us as a people. Whether you go to schools, universities, the house is appreciated. Okay. Whether you, whether a lot of people are not into unemployment, whether our economy is going down the drain, whether our refineries are not working, where are we putting money to, to make our refinery work? We are not borrowing money. We are not borrowing money. So give to people because we want to remove subsidy that this particular government said was a fraud while they were campaigning.